Two weeks ago, despite warnings of a trade war, the U.S. threw the first punch in its fight against alleged intellectual property and technology theft with a haymaker worth $50 billion in tariffs. China countered with a $3 billion salvo, mostly for pork products, and hinted U.S. agriculture was square in Chinese sites. The U.S. responded this week with a long list of items that included semiconductors, car parts, and machine tools. In less than a day, China unleashed a roundhouse matching the power of America's initial blow, with U.S. agriculture taking the brunt of the attack. President Trump returned fire with an additional $100 billion in tariffs. China does not want a trade war because there will be no winner in a trade war. If someone insists on starting a trade war, China will fight till the end. The National Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Soybean Association agree there are no winners in a trade war. So I think there are ways to resolve it, but it's going to have to be in a way that saves face for the Chinese, as they would call it, and it's going to have to give the president some win. Um, let's hope they find that solution. The catalog of U.S. goods slated to be charged a 25 percent tariff now comprises more than 100 items, including a laundry list of agricultural goods that could put beef, pork, corn, and soybean exports in jeopardy. The response from other industry trade groups was almost immediate. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association said the unfortunate casualties of a trade war would be America's producers and Chinese consumers. The National Farmers Union expressed concern, saying there was no plan in place to protect family farmers and ranchers who are always the first to suffer from retaliatory tariffs. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross was quoted on CNBC as saying, this 50 billion that they're talking about amounts to about three-tenths of a percent of our GDP, so it's hardly a life-threatening activity. Larry Kudlow, the newly minted head of the White House's National Economic Council, cautioned against panic and said the president wants to grow the American economy, not to hurt any of its sectors. This should not be viewed as strictly mano mano punitive damages, you know, that kind of thing. This got to be viewed in the context of economic growth, which is what this administration is all about. And that's the end game. Even though Chinese tariffs will only be levied if the U.S. makes the first strike, early trading on Wednesday saw commodity markets plunge more than a dime in the nearby corn contract and a whopping 40 cents in the May soybean contract. Markets rebounded after the initial shock wore off, but remained lower. U.S. farmers and ranchers are aware China is unable to feed all of its 1.3 billion citizens with domestic production. Chinese markets take about one-third of American soybean production, making it the number one destination for the U.S. harvest. The nearly 1.4 billion bushels are valued at around $14 billion. U.S. pork producers exported an estimated $1.1 billion worth of product to China in 2017 and stand to lose significant market share. This is not a very good place to be in a trade war. Um, they're unpredictable, the duration, the, the impact. Um, so I, I'm a little taken aback by this uh, attitude that's uh, come from the White House. It's a very serious matter, and Iowa is going to be the first casualty agriculture, Iowa, soybeans, pork. This is what's going to hit uh, the hardest. Uh, and so the target is on farmers' backs, and uh, it's a very bad place to be. Many agree that tariffs are targeted at rural America, the main source of votes credited with electing President Trump. Chinese clearly selected soybeans to send a message to the Trump administration. We know your politics. We know this will have impact on the people that voted for you. I don't think there's any doubt about it. So based on that, yeah, I think agriculture is going to pay perhaps a disproportionate share of the burden or the cost of this potential trade war. U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue stated that farmers would be protected and that the president had some tough decisions to make. This was echoed by other members of the Trump administration. Uh, we are trying to put in place uh, measures which will uh, have the backs of our farmers and our ranchers and everybody else in this country. Give us some time to play this out 
and I might say not only in consultation with China, obviously, but in consultation with the ag community, in consultation with the manufacturing community, the car auto community. You see, it's all part of a you know fairly delicate, broad-based negotiation. But it's long overdue. That's all I'm saying. We can fix this thing. It's going to have a great ending. Kudlow later stated U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer was working behind the scenes to start negotiations with the Chinese. As of now, Chinese officials say nothing will come to pass unless the U.S. makes good on its threat to enact trade tariffs. Official U.S. documents show a hearing on the matter will take place on May 15, which will be followed by a one-week comment period. No matter the final outcome, Leeds is concerned about the long-term effects of the confrontation. Is the potential for anti-Americanism to continue to grow? Again, I've been going to China for many years. It's certainly more prevalent now to see this anti-American mindset. And the Chinese have a history of getting into disputes with other countries, and it impacts the way consumers view the world. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.